Hi, this is Oscar Beckler with Prophetic Sky, uh, here detailing the character pipeline from our new game, Knights vs. Aliens, now available for the iPhone and iPod Touch and iPad. Here you can see our character. Uh, there's a lot of modeling detail because your sprites are so small that that's really going to help pick up detail. Uh, there's only two lights, an ambient uh, set to 0.7 and some color, and a big sunlight. The plane here has a shadow material which has transparency turned off and the alpha turned to zero. And that's going to matter later on when we start compositing the shadow. Now another thing is that you'll see that this is scene default right now. There's eight other scenes that are marked scene one through eight. And all that's on these scenes is a camera that is rotated 45 degrees each time. Uh, you'll notice I wasn't able to select the character or the rig or anything. Uh, what I'm doing is in the uh, scene properties referencing scene default as the background scene. And that means that it'll use all the models and rendering and lights in that scene when doing it, but it won't use the compositing. Uh, the render layers I'm using are speed, normal, shadow, uh, I'm rendering with RGBA on a ping, I set my uh, uh, anti-aliasing to 5 with Mitchell Natural Valley and 1.5, I found that gave me uh, less pixel popping and still kept a lot of the sharpness. And also make sure you're rendering with uh, straight alpha. So jumping over to the compositor, here you can see the render layers I'm using. I come from a Photoshop background, so a lot of the methods I use for compositing are based around just trying to mimic that idea of layers stacked on top of each other, maybe with a layer mode transfer and at different opacities. Uh, there are only a few steps to this character process. As you can see, he's got blur on his shield, he has a shadow underneath him, and he has a faint black highlight, or outline. And I'll show you how to do these things. First off, if you look, the initial render uh, is just a straight blue, nothing going on, no shadow. The first thing I do is I sharpen it to get a little more pop going, and I change the hue a little bit. Uh, the next thing I do is the shadow node, and this one is a bit tricky. What you get if you look at the shadow rendering is a black shadow on white with variations of transparency. And what we need is it to look like this, transparent uh, <coughs> transparent and all black, so that we can layer it under our uh, primary image. Now you can see here that I'm using a series of set alpha nodes to separate out the alpha. And then lastly, uh, what I do is I run it into a separate RGBA uh, and then run most the RGB back into a combined RGB, but then I use a multiply node or a math node with that's set to multiply to reduce the overall effect of the shadow here, because I don't want the shadow to be overpowering. And uh, I tested this a lot against our sprite background, so you should be doing the same with yours. So now that we have this uh, output shadow node, as you can see, it's nice and subtle. Uh, what we're going to do is layer it underneath our uh, primary image. And boom, he has a shadow. There's still a lot of stuff we can do with this character, though. Uh, here you can see the next step, which is I added some slight highlights using a normal node. What you do is you run your, your normal pass into a normal node, and then run the dot factor into a color ramp. And this is going to, uh, here you can see, just make a slight, tiny highlight around the edges. And then what I do is, uh, I end up adding this with a mix node set to dodge, I believe. And that's going to uh, both brighten and make it more saturated based off of that slim highlight. Just a quick word on node groups. I'm using them a lot. The way you can use them is if you select a bunch of nodes with uh, the B key for box selection, you can then hit Control G to turn them into a node group. And afterwards, they're a lot more organized, and you just enter them by hitting tab while that node group is selected and exiting it with tab 2. Really quick, here's my motion blur. You run the image to the image, the speed to the speed, the z to the z, and the vector to the vector, I believe. Uh, and after I do it, I run a sharpen filter on it. And then lastly, as you can see, I'm separating out the RGB. I'm running the alpha into a color ramp, and then using that color ramp to set the alpha of the image. The reason is because a lot of the things in Blender's compositing that distorts pixels, such as the dilate a road node or the motion blur node, uh, do not affect alpha. So what you have to do is explicitly create an alpha channel from them and run that back in.
I ended up putting my motion blurred image underneath the previous image uh, with a alpha over node because I liked the idea of keeping the detail in the sprite while having the motion blur lines uh, going behind it and making sure you can see some dynamic motion behind it. So next up, we're going to take a look at the dilator road node that I'm using. I just run the alpha channel into here, and then I'm using it, as you can see, the dilator road node basically increases or decreases the amount of pixels around. What I'm going to end up doing is uh, running the dilator road node through a color ramp and the initial alpha through a new, another color ramp and then using a mix node set to difference to separate one from the other. And this will create an outline image of our sprite. Finally, we're going to run that through a color ramp set to black on one end and uh, zero alpha on the other, which will separate it out into its alpha format. Lastly, you're going to end up using an alpha over node to put this underneath your other render. And you're essentially done. Once again, I'm Oscar Beckler for Prophetic Sky. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And go check out our new game, Knights vs. Aliens, for iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch.